Hello and welcome to my stream. It is a balmy Sunday afternoon. Well, I guess evening here. Um, it's real humid outside and uh, I'm going to be drawing some stuff from an old project of mine. Um, story that I started eh, a couple years ago. Um, thought about making into like a written story because the thought of drawing this all out was, I don't know, a little overwhelming. Um, and who knows, I might still turn it into a written story, but I also really like drawing these two characters because they're just fun. Um, so this is a story I have named in the meantime Commander and Chief, a story about a paladin and an orc who meet and they fall in love. It's so, it's so sweet and precious. Um, but yeah, these are the two main characters. Uh, we've got uh, Lynn Breitholt, who is the paladin on the right, uh, and then we have Dunok, who is the orc on the left, obviously. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be drawing snippets from the story. I'm going to be maybe drawing some goof comics, uh, whatever. It's kind of freeform at this point. It's whatever I feel like drawing. Um, so I was actually on top of it, and I actually drew something for the welcome screen uh, instead of trying to draw it live. <laughs> I think I'm going to add a little bit to it because uh, I was talking on the phone while I was working on this, so it was not as polished as I want it to be. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. I'm going to be drawing some, some uh, orcs and some paladins, and I think it's going to be great. So... After I finish my welcome screen, I'm going to hop right into it. We also may be getting a visit from a sleepy cat. Because my cat woke up and he was looking at me like he expected something. But I don't know what he wants from me. I don't know what he wants. Um, so yeah, let's see. I think I'm going to add a background. I just want a little value in my picture. So I feel like I was really, really on top of things today. I mean, got, got my welcome screen. I had the, had the file all set up, ready to go. I even changed my stream information, which I forgot to last time. It was, it was a real bad. <laughs> I realized it after the stream was over. I was like, oh, oops, my bad. Um, but yeah, we've got all sorts of productiveness happening today. Um, there's really something to be said for coming into it prepared. All right, let's see. Give me a gradient, please. Just the messiest gradient, if you could. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do this on a separate layer. That would make sense, I think. I think my first welcome screen that actually has like a million layers. I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna get more and more uh, just complicated. <laughs> now, let's see. I want a gradient, please. Okay. That's a little closer to what I wanted. Um, so yeah, I think what I'm going to start off by doing is after I'm done with this, maybe flip through my notes. I actually have, oh, I don't know, 50 pages of story typed out. Actually, it's probably more like 80. It's, it's a lot. I just cranked it out over a few weeks. Um, and I think I'm just going to choose, yeah, like random, random bits from the story to, to draw. Um, it's something that's not really set in stone. Um, again, maybe I do a written version um, because not to not to cast a pall on writers, but uh, <laughs> when you're trying to draw uh, lots of things, it just adds up real quickly. And like, it's a story that takes place, you know, out on a beautiful grassland, but there's also like a fort and a town and. Um, I'm sure there's horses at times, and those are just things that are real complicated to draw. So uh, my whole 
sort of uh, reasoning behind doing the story was like, you know, hey, I'm not going to have to draw any of this stuff. So I can make, you know, the show pieces, I can make the set pieces real big and elaborate because, you know, I'm just not going to have to draw them. Um, but, you know, joke's on me because I do like drawing comics and I'm not... I'm, I'm a decent writer, um, but I've put a lot of my skill points into being an artist. <laughs> so when the words fail, I, my instinct is to go straight to, straight to drawing because picture worth a thousand words, yada, yada. Um, and so I, I went into it with the best of intentions. I'm going to write the story. It's going to be a lot easier. It's not going to be as hard as, you know, making a graphic novel for crying out loud. Well, here we are. You know, and here's me with sketchbooks, upon sketchbooks of sketched out <laughs> moments from the story. So who knows? Hey, welcome. Happy Sunday. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Let me get this out of here and then I'll be done. I'm done tinkering with this welcome screen. All right, erase. Did that do anything? Nope. Fill with white then. Oh my God, that's not white. Okay. All right, I am going to hit save. I am not so foolish as to think that my computer won't fail in the most catastrophic moment. All right. I gotta remember that this is all on three layers, not just one. Um, okay. I think to get me started, I'm going to start off with a random page. Uh, maybe another random page. Hmm. All right, gosh, I haven't, so I haven't looked at this. I haven't looked at these notes uh, for, I don't know, probably like eight months. <laughs> uh, I just picked it up again last night. Ooh, impulse plant and container buying. Okay, so real talk, those llama slash alpaca pots were just so good. <laughs> oh, I... I, I am intrigued to see uh, updated photos of the plant window. You are a better plant parent than I. <laughs> they, they were all very good. I also appreciate the fact that I recognized Carl. <laughs> Carl, the, the plant species I don't remember. But yeah, awesome. Oh gosh, I did not mean to do that. All right. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, let me just start off with a sketch of them both, which is going to be fun because one is very big and one is very small. So trying to get them on the same page is always an exercise in redrawing <laughs> and resizing. And then I think I might hop into maybe drawing a bit from, from the story. All right, so here we have the two types of characters that I know how to draw. Big dude, <laughs> big muscle dude, <laughs> slightly smaller, but still somewhat muscly uh, woman, so. I'm just going to get his just rough in his shape, which is just big, big with a capital B. Also, it's been a hot minute since I've drawn either of them. So the proportions and sizes are going to be a little, uh, I think it's going to be more of a journey for the stream. Uh, what I do remember very important part of 
their character design is that she is eye level with his uh, chest. And she's got armor. She's got big old pauldrons. <laughs> I'm excited for today's drawings too. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what what comes up. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see what how the the plant window takes shape. Plants are one of those things where I like the idea of them. And I did have, in one of my old apartments, I had a very small garden uh, in like wine boxes on the patio. Um, but it was just, because <laughs> it was outside, it was just so much work to, uh, watering them was not the issue. It was keeping all the bugs off them. And it was just this never ending cycle of like, ah, uh, there's aphids. Ah, uh, they're eating my plants. Ah, uh, gotta harvest it before the bugs get everything. Um, and I did like it. It was just, it was just a lot. <laughs> it was just my eternal war against aphids and whatever else. Um, so I unfortunately did not inherit the green thumb of my grandmother who uh, family, family lore has it that she smuggled stuff in using her children as like orchid mules. <laughs> she was like sewing uh, orchid bulbs into their, their coats and smuggling them across state lines. Um, yeah, so apparently my grandmother was a hardened plant criminal. Um, and all, it was all I could do just to keep my unkillable spinach plant from dying. <laughs> Thrives with neglect type plants are, they're about the limit of what I can deal with. I had, I want to say it was called like a perpetual spinach plant um, that I called Robocop because you could ignore it for like three weeks and it would die. But then you watered it and it'd be like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess it's time to, to live again. And that was the hardiest of my, <laughs> my plants. And I loved it so much. I miss you, Robocop. Um, but yeah, I've decided to take a break from uh, living plants. I've got a bunch of fake plants in my apartment because I like green, right? Like I know it's good for mental health and stuff, but for me, the anguish of trying to keep them alive outweighs any of the benefit. Um, yes, so my aunts and I'm assuming uncle were used as orchid mules. Also like pickled mango mules. Yeah, like it was a whole thing. I got, I got all of the dirty details about my grandma after she passed. Um, also, I like... I like the idea of orchid mules and other plant animal hybrids. I'm I'm writing it down. I'm going to put it here on layer what is this? Layer one. Where I will inevitably find it when I go to export the drawings. Orchid plant slash animal. Actually orchid mule. And then plant animal hybrid. I like it. I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, I guess it's time to live again is my motto. Um, so speaking of living again, um, yeah, they've been opening up restrictions at just breakneck speed uh, everywhere I've seemed to gather, um, but especially here. Um, and just out of curiosity and also because I... I think I'm going a little stir crazy. I think I've managed to keep a handle on it uh, for quite a while, but I think just between the warm weather and just everything, as I wave my hand around, um, yeah, I was just curious. So I, I got to looking up some of what all is happening in the area, but safely, <laughs> there is a Ren Fair 
uh, going on really in a couple weeks, I think. I just found that out today, um, which seems about right. I think I recall hearing something about a Ren Fera here. They're big on, they're big on LARPing, as I understand it. Um, and then, again, with, with warmer weather kind of hitting us, um, I looked into a couple of runs. So I might do, to get slowly back into it, I might do a 5k, um, but there's also like a, a half marathon. Well, there's a few half marathon things going on, um, but I, I kind of thought I would build up to it. Obviously, because, you know, going from being in quarantine to doing a half marathon doesn't really bode well. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, I, uh, the one in, uh, the one in LA got postponed yet again, and it just kind of occurred to me, I was like, oh, well, hey, they have, you know, they've got that type of thing out here, and it's outside, so in all theory, if I, you know, stay masked up and just stay away from other people, it should be fine, <laughs> so we'll see, um, but yeah, and it's really cheap. It's like 15 bucks. Although I think that that was the cost of the one in California too. So maybe I think I was looking up races at the same time, which is why it stuck out as cheap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in all reality, I'm not, I don't consider myself like a very, I don't know, active person because I don't like to be, but I know it's healthy. And since now my job kind of revolves around like, hey, you should, you know, tell people how to be healthy and eat healthy, blah, blah, blah. It was just like, you know, you know, I gotta, I gotta start building some healthy habits. Um, I don't like running, um, but it is something where it's like, eh, it's, it's got a real low cost of entry um, in terms of equipment. And you don't need any specialized equipment to do it. You just gotta run. So it's among the cheaper sort of physical activities you could do. Um, and I mean, 5K is not, it's not that bad. I can, I can bang out a 5K. Like, I won't be fast, uh, but I can, I can do three miles at a stretch. Uh, 13 miles, a little, a little less so. I need a little prep for that. Um, but yeah, it's just something that I did in high school and it's like, eh, I liked being in shape. I liked the sensation of being in shape. I just don't like the hard work that <laughs> it kind of entails. Uh, so no, I'm, I am definitely a proponent of one of the laws of thermodynamics. I don't remember which one it is. A body at, re at rest stays at rest. Yeah definitely a body at rest and I like to stay at rest <laughs> but unfortunately the uh, I was gonna say monkey brain but it's not even the monkey brain it's the like you've got to be healthy you know go out and do something so I've slowly been trying to get into the the sort of swing of things. I've been playing Ring Fit, which is fun, and I've talked about it before because it takes the parts of working out that aren't fun and basically gamifies it so that, you know, I actually pay attention to it and actually find it not distasteful to do every other day. <laughs> But yeah, if it's like I have to make up my own workout, I have to keep track of what I'm doing on certain days, I have to blah, 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 it's bad and I don't like it. Ring fit, it's just like, oh, you should use this skill to, to beat this boss. Okay, great. That'll mix up my workout. Love it. Oh, the Puritan work ethic brain. Yep, you nailed it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what it is. The part of your brain located next to your whatever 
amygdala that's like, you shouldn't be sitting still. You should be a productive member of society. You should be monetizing your hobbies. <laughs> Cries an artist. <laughs> yeah. Listen, the Puritan work ethic brain is strong. Also, I love and hate that it's called that because it's so true. I think it's, uh, for me, sometimes it's a carryover of being a child in a strict family. <laughs> Just like if you're not doing something to make money, you're not being productive. It's not worth doing, blah, blah, blah. Bunch of bullshit. But yet here we are. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm just doing uh for this drawing anyway. Just doing basically their character lineup. It's literally just you know she's like whatever. I think I have her set at like five two. She should probably be shorter than that actually, because he's supposed to be like seven feet tall. What are heights? What are numbers? Whatever, I'll fix it later. All right. So I've drawn him, drawn the orc a number of times and his design, like many things, has evolved over time. Um, so he went from being like this World of Warcraft ass looking orc to being slightly less World of Warcraft looking, question mark. Um, but then I don't draw him for like stretches at a time and it's like, uh, I just default back to whatever I originally drew him as. So we'll see what iteration we come up with today. It'll be great. Uh, he does not have a goatee. I don't think. Yeah. That feeling when you haven't drawn something for ages and you don't remember how anything goes. It's happening here. I feel like he had Oh, he's got he's got like a he's got like a boar shrug. So he's the chief of a clan that hunts boars and my studio Ghibli fanness is showing here because um, it's like so so strongly uh, inspired by the boars in Princess Mononoke. There's straight up like a boar stampede um, because Princess Mononoke is my favorite movie hands down. Not just favorite Ghibli movie, it's my favorite movie. I watched it so many times when I was working on my demo reel when I was in college. And then I had the chance to go, so I was watching basically this like, this pirate version <laughs> on my computer. I just have it like off to one side while I was working in another window. And then I saw it in theaters because they re-released it for its like 25th anniversary or whatever. And it was like, I've seen this movie like hundreds of times. There were details in the theatrical release that I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like experiencing it anew for the first time. It was so good. It's such a good movie. If I could, uh, yeah, if I could just bottle up the feeling of seeing it in theaters, just that sensation of like, just like, dang, it really is like transporting you someplace because the soundtrack and the visuals and just, uh, -huh, it's so good. Cry. <laughs> yeah, Princess Mononoke is my jam. Love it so much. It's one of those movies where it's like, even if you don't like anime, it's like, just go watch this movie. It's a stinking masterpiece. Stinking Miyazaki. So good. <laughs> He's just one of those artists where it just makes me cry in despair because it's like, <laughs> nothing I do is ever going to measure up. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for my, for my weekly allotted five minute cry on the floor, it would be because of Miyazaki and Princess Mononoke. <laughs> oh, I want to do like a Studio Ghibli like just watch party. Just Lord of the Rings marathon, but just 
on speed because there's so many Studio Ghibli movies. I haven't even seen them all. Like, I'm trying to think. I haven't seen, like, Pom Poco, the, uh, the Tanuki one. There's a couple of others. I think Princess Kaguya, I think, was a Studio Ghibli. I haven't seen that. Uh, My Neighbors, the Yamadas. Am I, or am I mixing that up with My Neighbor Totoro? I feel like there were a number of neighbor films. <laughs> yes, Studio Ghibli Watch Party. Hell yeah. Yeah, and much like the Lord of the Rings stream or the Lord of the Rings marathon, it's definitely going to have to be accompanied by like Studio Ghibli food because that's a whole thing of just like they'll make something and it's like, damn, like I might have just eaten, but I'm so hungry now. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to do like a Studio Ghibli watch party slash, um, you know, check off, check off the movies from your, not bucket list, but like your to watch pile. So good. And just, uh, I don't know, some of them are just like so stinking atmospheric and like you don't need big action set pieces. You don't need, you know, blood or gore for it to be interesting or dramatic or whatever. Um, yeah, just, they're so good. What's the one? Uh, I won't say it's my favorite, but I do have, like, a fondness for it. It's called Whisper of the Heart. And it's uh, about this girl who's, I think she's in middle school. <laughs> And basically going through like not an existential crisis but like she just she likes to read a lot she's kind of in a funk she finds this you know cool antique shop and writes a story about uh this cat figurine that's in there uh and this film was actually kind of the predecessor to um the cat returns another studio ghibli film which focuses on the cat figure who comes alive in the cat return so it's a cool um i i won't say it's one of his more well-known films because i think people are more familiar with the cat returns um but it's a great it's a great movie again miyazaki man i don't think he's had a miss <laughs> except for maybe tales from earthsea i did watch it in theory but i also think i fell asleep halfway through it so um <laughs> That one, I think, was okay. It was it was an adaptation from another book, but yeah, I don't think that one really stood out to me. <laughs> Sorry, Miyazaki. Okay, I think I think I'm done. She also has a sword, but like, where am I gonna put a sword here? For all the fantasy characters and D and D characters that I draw. I still don't know how, like, how do sword belt hang? I don't know. So I'm just gonna kind of BS this in here. <laughs> so, fun fact, I actually did buy a Wizard of Earth. I bought like the first two Earthsea novels um, and I've read one of them and I haven't finished the second one. Um, it was good stuff. Just like the magic system and the world building and it was just, oh, it's not like, you know, fantasy Europe is good stuff. The movie was okay. I hadn't read the book, and so I think I was missing a lot of the context for what was going on. Um, so I might have to try going back and rewatching it now that I have actually read one of the novels. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to put a little, a little cross hatching on here, and then I'm going to call it a day. All right, so these are our main characters. Um, here's our big green boy, Dunok. Um, he is he is a uh, orc chieftain. Um, I think my literal notes have him as like he's like chill and pensive, right? So he's like a warrior poet, except he doesn't write poetry, but he's you know. I won't say he waxes philosophical, but it's 
you know, he's usually willing to like talk things through. And then we have, oh yeah, and he's like seven feet tall, right? Big boy. Um, over here we've got Lynn Breitholt, who is the aforementioned commander. Um, Paladin. And how would I describe her? Hmm. I guess, for lack of a better word, like a delinquent or delink delinquent. Eh? I just wrote this word yesterday. Why does that look wrong? Anyways, um, yeah, just kind of like a hothead, just real ready to throw hands, ready to throw down if someone looks at her funny. Or if someone's doing some bad stuff, that's, she's gonna, she is going to express her displeasure. <laughs> yes, and again, the only, like, my favorite ship dynamic, tall and small. Thank you. How could I forget tall? Um, I did do a comic where Dunok, the Orc Chieftain, is like, he has a diagram where he's trying to explain uh, Brightholt and her attitude to someone else. And basically the diagram was like a stick figure of Brightholt. And he's like, okay, so she's small, right? <laughs> and the other orc is like, yeah. He's like, and us orcs, you know, we tend to be bigger. And yeah, we do get angry, but our anger tends to be, you know, kind of spread out because we're so big. Her anger is condensed into a smaller package and that's why she's so explosive. And everybody's like, oh, okay, makes sense. Um, you know, the whole shorter people are like more prone to violence because they're, <laughs> they're closer to Satan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't write that joke. Um, but I did think it was really funny. Full disclaimer, I myself am not very tall. I'm half Filipino, which means I am... My fa half my family is short. <laughs> but yes, anyway, so that's the dynamic, right? It's, it's a good dynamic. It's all I want out of a, a fictional story. So, fun fact, the story arose because there was like, it was a wow thing. Um, yeah, she's just condensed anger. <laughs> Think, uh, yeah, it's like a Bruce Banner thing, except she doesn't like Hulk out. It's just, it stays in a pressure cooker. Um, but yeah, this whole thing came about because it was like, I don't, now, full disclosure, I don't play wow. I know enough about it to be semi knowledgeable. Um, and there was like a whole, there's like a whole ship between Thrall and Jaina Proudmore. But like, <laughs> and I, it just came up randomly and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I I don't go here, but I like this. Um, you know, I'm okay with just this content. But there wasn't that much content of it. And I was like, oh no, what? I, I'm not going to play WoW for something that doesn't actually happen in game. Um, oh no, what do I do? So obviously, right, the old adage of if it doesn't exist, you got to make it happen yourself. That's why this came about. <laughs> it was because there wasn't enough damn content of a stupid wow ship. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the history of this. Um, and yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, dang, I really wish I knew what happened in the story next. Well, I, I got to write it. Oh no, I've played myself. And so it's, um, yeah. And here we are. <laughs> I've got a stack of notes an inch high and I just sat down with him last night and was like, okay, like I've left enough projects hanging in my time. I gotta, I gotta finish something. Um, okay, so <laughs> DIY ship content. <laughs> On the one hand, it's very cool and fun to do it. On the other hand, it's like, dang, like, can't I just like sit back and have somebody else do this? 
It's it's the dog meme. No no draw, only consume. Only consume content. Uh, okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is do, um, yeah, like the whole beginning of the story I think is fairly set in stone. So, actually, no, it's not. I read through it last night and was like, this all needs to be rewritten. Um, but I'll do, I guess, kind of a rendition of how they, the original draft of how they meet. I'm trying to think. So, the story goes, uh, Brightholt, being the troublemaker and delinquent that she is, who is, however, a paladin, um, who has done some unpaladinly things, nothing bad, just, you know, apparently doesn't go to prayers or whatever, um, she gets shipped out to this fort in the middle of nowhere as kind of punishment of like here like you haven't you haven't done the things you've supposed you have supposed to have done um you know go out here and like cool down and we're gonna figure out what to do with you um so she goes out to this fort that's i won't say juvenile detention but it's essentially like a dumping ground for all of the like the other delinquents and so it's this fort that's full of just the worst soldiers. They're not evil, they're just mm, probably incompetent. You know, so it's like, oh, you deserted the army? You go out here to this fort. What? You don't know how to use a sword? Go out to this fort. So she gets stuck out here as the temporary commander, because it's like, here, you know, you want to be in charge so bad. Go go do the job yourself. She's like, damn it. But she tries to make the best of it. She becomes, you know, a better leader for it. Um, but in the meantime, she meets this, you know, this, this orc who leads the local orc tribe. And I'm still trying to figure out the exact sort of circumstances of how they meet. I think... In its current iteration, uh, Brighthole goes out on patrol, even though her second-in-command is like, why? You have people to do that for you. You don't, you know, you don't actually have to do some of the work that you're doing. You are the commander now. And she says, if you want a job done right, you got to do it yourself. She doesn't actually say that. It's more along the lines of, I do what I want. Um, so she goes out, sees this orc, who, he's the chief, why is he out here just hanging out by himself? Um, an excellent question. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet in the first draft of the story. I'm sure he's out there for a perfectly good reason. But anyways, so they meet, of course. And at first it's like, uh, who are you? And it's like, oh, you know, I'm I'm the commander of uh, the fort over yonder. You know, the one that you guys don't like to actually go to? The one that you guys kind of avoid? <laughs> um, and anyways, the aforementioned boar stampede happens. And because Dunak is a good and, you know, sort of Dudley Do-Right sort of guy... You know, he, like, hoists Brighthold up into the tree, gets her out of danger. He gets out of danger's way, too, for a bit. Um, boars knock over his tree. It's a bad time. Oh, the king has arrived. Hello, sir. Have you come to comment on my art? Have you come to give me your expert words of wisdom? My cat is here. He is about to make himself known. All right. What is he doing at this point of the story? Nothing, I think, productive. I think Brightholt at this point is just like, wow, this guy sure is buff. So we're going to, uh, we're going to emphasize that. Um, 
it's it's a romance story so of course it's like well you know he poses in the sunlight he's got a big old axe over his shoulder Brighthold is like oh hey a diplomatic opportunity to connect with the local folks um but also dang this guy's kind of it's kind of hot he's also seven feet tall but that doesn't matter <laughs> Hail his majesty, pot roast. Yes. Um, he agrees. He agrees with everyone who has ever offered him adulation. He deserves all of it, right? He claimed my... <laughs> he claimed my laundry earlier today and was like, this will make a fine throne. Yep, diplom, quote unquote, diplomacy. Um, working title of this story for... A second before I changed it because I was like, ah, this is just real on the nose, huh? It was diplomatic relations, but you know, I changed it for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, anyways, he's got a big axe. I think. Does he have a big axe? Yeah, he does. And it should be resting on his shoulder a little lower. Because I definitely know how to pe how to draw people holding great axes. Oh my goodness. What is going on? Um, but yeah. Anyways, the whole idea is like, how do you get these two folks who are, at least theoretically, in charge of their respective factions, how do you get them to meet without a whole bunch of other people around because realistically neither of them would be out just farting around without some sort of you know honor guard at least one other person to be like hey you're important we need you to not kick the bucket <laughs> or it could be bad um so i still have to contrive some circumstances but i think that's what the romance genre is all about Contriving circumstances. Uh, just like a sitcom. Situational comedy. That's romance. Just in the opposite direction. Actually, no, I did intend it to be kind of funny. I don't think I could write just a straight romance. Or just like a, <laughs> a really earnest romance, I guess. No, there's just lots of goofs. So I've got comic relief characters in here because they have to comment on like, this is so, is anybody else seeing this? And that was actually kind of the first, one of the first things that I kind of put in was, you know, hey, this is, uh, this is all just kind of set up, right? We're all just figments of someone's imagination. No, it's not, it's not that self-aware. I can't stand stuff that's that like wink wink at the audience um but yeah um i'm sure his hair is doing something like blowing majestically in the wind so anime anime moments abound there's probably leaves i think actually i don't remember but for dramatics sake we're gonna we're gonna say there are Um, they're also in a clearing in the forest, but like I said, there was a reason why I only wanted to write this. Because I didn't want to have to draw a bunch of damn trees. I can draw one tree. I can draw a broccoli tree. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I'm not even going to draw the trees. Whatever. I drew leaves. It's good enough. <laughs> um, but yes. So they meet, and it's all just like, wow, so romantic. Well, actually, it's it's romantic for about five minutes, and then, you know, he gets run over by a pig. And so she's got to haul his heavy ass back to camp, because due to the contrived circumstances, they're out in the middle of the woods, and there's nobody else out there. Also, her her big grumpy horse runs off. You can't, you can't help her. So there's that. Um, but yeah, anyways, she's like, wow, 
big. So her brain kind of short circuits. Um, and she's also like, wow, like he speaks common. That's not what I was expecting. Because apparently nobody knows a bunch about the orcs because they don't want to hang out with anybody. <laughs> um, okay, so this is, we'll say, scene one, right? It's actually more like scene 20 because there's a bunch of stuff building up to this, but for our purposes, that's all we care about. Okay, next beat of the story is, and there was only one bed in the hotel room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, there was only one bed in the inn. Ah, I love it. Okay. Um, so fun fact, I actually did do a gag where there, there was like one bed and it's in the fort. And, of course, he's, like, seven feet tall and her bed is, like, built for her. So we get something where it's, like, God, I'm going to try to recreate one of my sketches. He's literally, like, <laughs> if you've ever seen a Great Dane on a bed made for, like, a, you know, a corgi, you know his pain. So he's basically like this. He's, like, you've got to be... You know, you've got to be kidding me. This isn't a bed. And she's like, the bed was made for one human. That was my size. And I'm normal size for a human. She's like, this isn't even comfortable or fun. I'm not having a good time. So he's just like, hey, hey. She's like, no, get off me. Yeah. So they're both trying to make the best of it. So that was the gag. There was only one bed in the inn. That's exactly, that's exactly it. So uh, part of the fun of doing your own stories is just like, well, I like this trope. I'm going to do more of it. <laughs> AKA, yes, there was only one bed in the hotel gasp they were roommates <laughs> yeah so you know you get to pick and choose all of the tastiest tropes are here and yeah it becomes quickly apparent like you know what's my jam oh i don't know dude who's like you know three times the size of you know his significant other oh and also you know they fight not each other, but they fight stuff side by side because, hell yeah, battle couple. Yep. Yep. All of the above. How, how do, oh gosh, I wanted my eraser, please. How do, how does skin work? I don't know. So anyways, he's going to be just like crunched up and she's trying to sleep, but she's having a rough time of it. She's like, this isn't comfortable. I'm not, I'm frankly, honestly not having a good time. Um, but I did want to do a gag where it's like, they're acting like a couple teenagers and it's like, he's seven, he's like seven feet tall, 400 pounds and you're sneaking him into the fort like it's a 90s sitcom. You know, you're the commander, you can do whatever you want. Nobody cares. And they're just like, hee 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 sneaking into the fort um they try to do something else sneaking into the orc camp and it's a little less successful because all the orcs are like instantly up in their chief's business and are quite frankly un unapologetic about it <laughs> Ooh, i have yet to read cosmo knights uh i i think i had opened the link when you had shared it a while back and was like, okay, like, I'm just gonna set aside a day and just like read through it. And then I never did. <laughs> so, um, absolutely sounds like my jam. We'll have to check it out. Apparently, the, I think I saw their second book is out or like second, second something. So yeah, I'm into it. My tastes are very predictable and tend to run, run along the same lines. Volume two is on its way, excellent. So 
so yeah the story is all about as i mentioned stacking all the tropes that i hold so dear and finding a way to shoehorn them all into one story <laughs> plot what plot there is no plot there is only circumstance and the circumstances are tropes why is he smiling he shouldn't be smiling he's frowning he's like this is so bad he's like this is the reason why i stay away from the fort because everything is so too damn small here it's not for any cultural or political reason it's because i came here once and i broke every chair in the picnic area because i just wanted to sit down and have a sandwich <laughs> So yeah, it's like, I like shoujo, right? Like uh, shoujo comics. It's like, oh, like sometimes you just want like, like some nice, fluffy, easy reading. But sometimes also it's just like, can we just shine a light on the absurdity of some of this stuff? Because, come on, let's be real. And that's, that's kind of the vibe I'm going for here. <laughs> there was only one bed. And it wasn't as romantic as you would think. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see. So I think I'm going to do... Uh, this is going to be a page of tropes. So, so there's only one bed. Slash. Gasp, they were roommates. Uh, I'm going to do two versions of sneakiness. So one is going to be her trying to sneak him into the fort and it's a fail let's see so she's gonna be I think walking with a straight face and by straight face I mean she doesn't have a very good poker face she shows her emotions on her sleeve slash face Let's see. She's going to be wearing her cloak. And someone is going to be under it. Hmm. Who could it be? I wonder. Uh, let's see. Also, it went strangely silent in my headphones. So give me just a second. I'm going to take a drink. I'm going to find out what happened. And I'll be back to draw the rest of this cloak. <laughs> oh, I have so many windows open. And it's not where I thought it would be. Oh no. Hello. There we go. All right. So back to, back to the action. All right, so she gives it her best shot. However, she is a paladin. She's not a soldier, nor is she a stealthy spy her solution toss a toss a cloak over him it'll be fine nobody will notice at all um he says i i don't think that's right i don't i think people might notice she's like no it's fine and people do notice they're like what Commander, your your cloak seems to be uh, malfunctioning. There seems to be something. Uh, she's like, no, don't talk to me. All in all, a great success. Um, 
and then I'll say that he does something similar, right? Because we mentioned he does have kind of a kind of a boar skin hoodie. due to their difference in sizes. He's like, you know what? I think I actually can do this, but this isn't something that you could have done. So he's gonna roll in, boar skin hoodie, only slightly puffier than usual because tucked away inside of it is going to be bright hole, just like clinging on like Yoda from Star Wars. So he's gonna have a little bright hole backpack. Except it's still unsuccessful because, ev listen, everybody knows. Everybody knows what's happening here. You guys aren't being subtle at all. So, it's a very much a classic, you know, everybody sees it. So, he's, he's better at putting on a, he's got a slightly better poker face than she does. So he's just like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't question me, I'm the chief. And they're like, you never say that. You're clearly up to something. All right. So he's sweating a little bit because he's trying to throw his authority around, but everybody knows it's bullshit. <laughs> they're like, no, you're actually a good chief. You never say that. Obey me because I'm the chief. So that in and of itself is suspicious. So they're all just like, hmm, side eye. They don't care about her per se, it's just like, no, dude, like, we get it. But why lie? So there is a, a very short period of time where they're both like, huh, who? Chief? Commander? Don't know him. And they're all like, mm-hmm. All right, boom. So there we go. Two attempts at sneaking. Attempt number one, foiled. Attempt number two, also foiled. <laughs> they're just, listen, they're good at their jobs and not much else. All right. I've hit save. I'm trying to think, what other tropes have I shoehorned into the story? Oh yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of the good, good, you know, the hurt comfort. Oh, wrong layer. Right, because it's one thing to have the characters sort of in normal circumstances and be like, oh, you know, they they care for each other. That's fine. But then it's like, oh my gosh, like you hurt so-and-so. Now that's my like rage meter or whatever. Um, so let's see. I think... What happens? Again, I haven't read the, I haven't read my notes in a while. I think they fight some sort of uh I'm gonna draw there's like a demon. And I'm going to cop out. It's not even a humanoid demon. I think it's some sort of bird demon. But I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a placeholder. Not sure if I want to have demons in the story. Not sure that's the angle I want to go for, but uh, that's what the first pass has anyway. Oh gosh, I got a burp. Ooh, excuse me. All right. I do have a couple of like maquettes that show me because the thing about drawing these two characters is I know how to draw humans. Humans are fine and easy to draw. I mean, they're challenging, but I'm familiar with drawing them. Orcs? Him? How make 
how make these giant ass teeth work in a humanoid jaw? And the answer is sometimes it just doesn't. Sometimes the facial topography is just real, it's just real screwy. Okay, so he's supposed to be shouting, but also from the back? Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's about what that's gonna be. Um, so yeah, I made a couple of maquettes so I could rotate a three-dimensional representation and get an idea of how this was supposed to work because he's also more jacked than <laughs> realistic people are. Uh, so it's like, how do I rotate all of these muscles in one, in one sort of character? When in doubt, make a maquette. Look at the maquette. There's no photos I can look at. Actually, I did watch a lot of WoW trailers because they did a really good job of animating the orcs. Again, I'm not... I refuse to dip my toes into, <laughs> into those waters. I refused, you know, when it first came out, like 15 years ago. Because I know myself. If I was to go into WoW, I would never come out of it again. But yeah. I do like the lore. I like... I like it. I'm just not going to ever play it. Alright, so his hair goes back. He's got a braid. He's probably going to be more hunched up than that, I should think. Hmm. Wait a second. This isn't... This isn't my inker. What happened here? Really? Was I using this the whole time? That looked weird. Hmm. Alright, so he's gonna be like rushing forward to do battle. Ah, oh, boy. So, fun fact, I was uh, drawing some sketches for folks over on Twitter and like I mentioned, I'd made a maquette of uh, Dunok slash just an orc so I could uh, reference back to it but then in trying to sort of visualize how somebody would swing a great axe I then had to take pictures of myself like essentially swinging a bat around <laughs> to try to get a sense of the mechanics um, so somewhere on my hard drive I do have um, some photos of me with a baseball bat in the pose of, you know, whatever the sketch was, because I needed the angle, because I needed to see, I needed to get an idea of how it would work. This really isn't, this really isn't how someone would swing a great axe, but I think that's, that's where I'm going to leave it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being a filthy casual. <laughs> Yeah, see, I, I know myself and I know I've learned to recognize things that are just like, oh yeah, this is exactly what I would love and I'm going to stay far away from it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I feel, I feel you. I'm trying to think what, I, I know I definitely like stress played quite a few games and yeah if it had been wow that would have been me I think I played a lot of Fall Guys um like it wasn't even on sale it was just like oh like this seems fun and like just not requiring any sort of strategy or whatever it was just like I just wanted to play something and not have to commit to you know, because like in WoW, it's like, okay, we're going to go raid whatever. You got to coordinate with people. You just show up for Fall Guys. <laughs> it's just like, yay. <laughs> I wasn't playing with anybody, so, you know, you didn't have to worry about people making it to the next round. Um, but yeah, I put a lot of time into Fall Guys. Um, I was never actually really good at it. Like, 
me playing Hades or like me playing any other game. Um, I mainly advanced in level just because I was persistent. <laughs> Not because of any measurable skill, so. It was literally me just, yeah, grinding through the levels. Um, let's see, I want to change this demon up. Fall Guys is a lot of fun. It's, um, there are frustrating aspects of it, just like any game. And honestly, I haven't played in months. Um, yeah, so I, I stress played it for a while because um, of my job and the world. Um, but then I kind of, I think I hit like a plateau in terms of what I could, in terms of what I could do um, or what I could win. Um, but it is a lot of fun. I actually, I've been meaning to to jump back into it because there's some new levels, I think. They may not be new as far as the game is concerned, but they're new to me because I haven't, I haven't played in a while. <laughs> yeah, don't give me any games that involve skill. Um, yeah, I think for Fall Guys, it's like there's... There's an element of, there is a learning curve of like, oh yeah, you gotta learn the controls, you have to learn the mechanics of like, um, like how to grab, when to grab, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I found it like, I won't say forgiving enough, um, but I found that you could just as easily jump right into a new game. Um, like I said, solo player, I wasn't worried about like, oh no, my friends have to, you know, they're going to finish their thing and then I got to catch up with them. So, you know, I was able to, to hop right back in and there was no skin off, no skin off my back. Um, but yeah, there is some reaction time. Also some luck. I, I, you know, made it through some rounds just because I was in the right place at the right time. Much like life. Um... But yeah, it was it was like a nice casual game. You could always tell who like the, you know the real hardcore folks were, or the ones who were willing to drop money on stuff because it was like, oh wow, they have that skin or whatever. No shade to them, just you know they were either a very skilled or b were willing to spend money on it. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I don't, I. I have neither, neither skill nor money. <laughs> uh, three things, or willingness to spend money on this thing. Um, I think I was going for demon. I have instead drawn dragon. So I think I'm going to do demon dragon. Or beholder dragon. I don't know. I don't know what they're facing, but it's mad, whatever it is. Actually, I think I'm just gonna leave it an empty gaze. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, give me a game that's just fun to play. I don't care about being the best. I don't care about, winning is nice, but I think that's just kind of the icing on the cake. It's like, I, it's a game. I want to be diverted. I want to be entertained. So. My, my game library reflects that. <laughs> um, let's see. What's a horrific shape? Maybe it's on... Maybe a too thin neck? Maybe... Maybe there's a bunch of them. Maybe there's a couple of heads. Okay, this isn't the hurt comfort trope. This is the battle couple trope. <laughs> I've changed my mind. The hurt comfort apparently comes later. Battle couple. That good, good trope. The family that slays together stays together. Or whatever. All right, bright hold is probably just right in there. So her hair is all over the place. So when I designed them, 
um, I designed them to, like, as they, you know, got to know each other, slash, got to be involved, um, their fashion started to kind of mimic each other as well. So Brighthold starts off with this, like, mop of hair, and Dunok is like, you're fighting. Why is your hair all over the place? You're gonna die because you didn't see somebody swinging an axe at you. She's like, I don't like to braid my hair. Um, so he ends up braiding her hair for her. She's like, uh, I guess this is fine. So they have similar hairstyles, at least in the braid. So she's going to be swinging her sword. She's probably... Actually, she's going to be doing a big chop. And which way is the sword going? This way. And... I don't know what she's chopping, but it's falling off. Maybe it's a tail. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, they also have, you can't see it here, but they also have similar... So he gives her a pair of earrings that are like his. Um, and he's basically like, you know, hey, I'm giving you these earrings, not, you know, as a show of like, you're mine or whatever. Um, but it's like, we're partners, you know, we're, we're equals, we belong together. She's like, rad, that's sick. She's like, these are really big earrings. And he's like, yeah, I gotta get them sized down. They were made by an orc craftsman. <laughs> they didn't understand how small you are. All right, she's probably gonna be, she's got her leg up, big action pose. Um, I don't think she has a shield because Brightholt is this no defense, only attack. She is small and she must attack. Um, if they were, if they were dog breeds, she would be a chihuahua. She's just biting your ankles. She is small and filled with anger. All right. Um, I think he wears some sort of, I know I said he has a bear, a boar hoodie. He also has some sort of like weapons harness that I always forget to draw because I'm not interested in drawing a weapons harness. I just want to draw a muscular dude. All right, well, there we go. I don't know what else is part of this demon. Um, I think I'm gonna make it a goose. Because every time I drive by this pond that's by my house, they have Canadian geese that I think are returning for the spring slash summer. Every time I pass it, I have to shout out Satan's birds. Because it's true, they are. They will mess you up. So this is going to be a Canadian goose. I, let's see, they've got like, it's a black head with white stripe. Canadian geese have like the best design, but it's also like, this is a bird that will fight you <laughs> and win. All right. The Canadian goose does not actually make an appearance in the story. So some of the stuff is false. And I think I'm just gonna make that a snake. That's just chilling on this side. Yep. All right, there we go. So battle couple. My, one of my top tropes. You'll love it. Um, let's see. Gosh, I'm trying to think what else. So I think there's a point where 
and this is where like the comedy aspect kicks, kicks in because I don't think that it necessarily happens. It was just something where I was like, ah, let's throw this, let's throw this in the story stew and see what hap what comes of it. Um, but there's a point where they play like a game of football, essentially. Um, but it's called goat ball. <laughs> Fanfic of your own OCs is just writing a book or writing a story. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I think I'll, I'll do a couple drawings of this, but speaking of fanfic of your own OCs, um, I was like, okay, this is like a fantasy D&D type story, right? But what if they were like modern, right? What if there was an AU of these same characters? <coughs> and yeah, I was literally thinking that because I, then I got off in a tear drawing that and it was like, is it an alternate universe if it's your own characters? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I, I did quite a few comics slash like side stories where I was like, oh, what if they were like modern? What if, you know, she was still a commander? Um, and I think I made him like captain of a football team or something because there, there was no, I was just like, oh, that'd be A, funny, I think, and B, um, an excuse to draw an orc in football gear? Mm -mm. Again, this is just... What point... What is the use of being able to draw slash write slash create anything if you can't just be self-indulgent? So this is definitely just... Self-indulgence. Peak self-indulgence. Be the change you want to see in the world. I.e. Write the stuff. <laughs> draw the stuff you want to see in the world um so but anyways talking about them playing goat ball slash football which is why i made him a football captain i think in the the modern au um i think the soldier so the soldiers from the fort and the orcs end up playing uh, a game of football outside, like, the local village or whatever. Um, and it's it's all in good fun at this point. Um, you know, they're, they're not uh, malicious. They're just trying to, like, basically get to know each other um, as, like, oh, hey, this is a human civilization and these are the orcs and, you know, hey, we're, we're still trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> So they end up playing this game, and uh, Brightholt is like, don't you dare take it easy on, on us. <laughs> and Dunok is like, uh, okay. Um, and so there's one point where Brightholt just gets like full on tackled. And she's like, it's fine, I can still fight, put me in coach. And he's like, I just accidentally tackled you, I'm so sorry. And she's like, I'm fine. I'm, I don't know how there's two of you now, but I'm fine. Modern high school college AU. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be my side, side story. <laughs> Is they meet in college. She's, yeah, she's from the ROTC and he's captain of the football team. And it's just like, Two different worlds, but they were meant for each other. Oh. Yeah, I think that was what I got distracted from writing the actual story. Because I was just like, dang, but like, what if? This doesn't belong in the main story, but I'm having fun writing this too. It It's a problem. So... We will see. Um, I definitely want to finish this project, uh, no matter what form it takes, whether it's a, you know, some sort of novella or like a gag-a-day comic. I don't know. 
maybe I just throw it out into the universe as a collection of half-finished notes that it is. Um, I did toy around with the idea of doing like a, um, like an illustrated novella, right? Because I mentioned, hey, I have trouble. Sometimes the words don't word so good. And sometimes it's easier to just draw what I had in mind. Um, and I know there's like light novels or whatever that have accompanying art. So that might be a thing. Really trying to play to my strengths, which is can't pay attention to anything for more than five minutes. So what is the format that holds my attention the most and makes it more likely for me to finish it? And that, my friends, is a question of the ages. Um, I don't know how people tackle, so I'm just gonna make it up. Sorry, Dunak, I don't feel like drawing your braid. But, yeah. Um, actually, he should be tackling a lot lower because if they're playing against human soldiers, none of the soldiers are as big as they are. And the soldiers are like, listen, Commander, we know you've got this, like, we know you've got this, like, thing with this guy, but could you not drag us into your whatever this is? And she's like, are you guys running from a fight? Are you, your months of training leading up to this? And they're like, we didn't sign up to play football, goat ball, against people who weigh twice as much as we do. Um, so there's a rousing uh, wartime speech in the context of, you know, we're going to defeat these guys at football. Actually, I think I think this soldier is just going to go, like, flying. This is just going to be someone just getting utterly demolished. Blah. So I remember, this is completely out of left field, but I remember just being utterly mystified on how to draw, like, fight scenes or any sort of, you know, how do you draw people just getting obliterated by, like, someone pushing them or punching them and just I have the most vivid memory of going to this place in California called Art Supply Warehouse and they had a, I think it was a how to draw manga book it was one of that series and it just kind of broke down like how to draw you know people in a fight and it had stuff like getting people getting punched people getting pushed and sort of explaining the body mechanics behind it and so now it's like, whenever I'm drawing somebody, I kind of have a mental image <laughs> of that book in my head of just like, dang, that was a really good explanation of it. Speaking of that, I know this is not how, that's not how people fall. He should really be crumpled inward, but I think this is funnier. Somebody just getting like, Pugh, knocked backwards. Um, so it was really good. The illustrations were really, were really uh, good in the book. And I'll have to, I've always thought about it because it's like, dang, that was like years ago. And I didn't know anything about drawing. If I had that book now, I would be unstoppable because I'm also out of practice. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to remember the rules of the game as I wrote them. Goat Ball, I believe, is actually something in a previous edition of Dungeons & Dragons, if I recall correctly. Um, but in this story, uh, Goat Ball is football, but the goalposts are determined by two goats that are tethered <laughs> at opposite ends of a field. So you have to run the ball to the goal but the goats move. So if the goats move, you know, 200 yards 
away, well, I guess you've got to run that far just to get the ball there. It's not fair, but goat ball isn't meant to be fair. Goat ball is meant to be the ultimate sport. And by ultimate, it's like ultimate suffering. <laughs> Games can last for days, and that's the ball. I think in actual goat ball, and by actual I mean fantasy goat ball, I think it's a rock wrapped in goat skin or something to that effect, so we'll say this is a, a, a rock wrapped in fur. <laughs> goal goats, yes. <laughs> the, the moving goal posts was not in the original rules, but then the goats nibbled through their tethers and walked away, and so they had to do some hasty adjustments to the, the rule book. So Brightholt, I think, Brightholt is going to be going in for like a flying tackle. So she's doing some, some shoujo, shoujo, some shonen anime, just like team power up jump. She basically has her soldiers make like <laughs> a human uh, springboard. She's just going to go in, going to go in for the kill. She's like, I can't actually jump up there without some help. And also I refuse to lose, so she's gonna just be really going for it. Uh, let's see, which way do thumbs face? Alright, flying leap. Also, she's probably in full armor too. That seems that seems like something she would do. Yeah, so she is just in her full on uniform. <laughs> like a maniac. Death from above. And then her soldiers are just like Go, Commander! We believe in you! So this is a real... Um, that touches on sort of one of my other most beloved tropes of just... Um, just ragtag army or ragtag group of people just... Uh, you know, it's this whole underdog story. <laughs> It's like we started off hating each other, and now we can actually kind of work together. Also, it looks like they're playing volleyball, so I, I guess that tracks for how chaotic goat ball is meant to be. And then there's probably like the other orcs are back here just like wreaking havoc. Um, you only need, I think in this game, you only need like Maybe two orcs as linemen. They're just so dang big. But they're having a great time. They're just like, yeah. I love goat ball. Woo! All right. So it's just chaos on the field. Goat ball. That happens. Maybe? Perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> it exists in the first draft. Um, all right. I've got a half hour left, I think. I think I'll do some AU, some alternate universe. Also, hello? Why are things falling? Is that you? Sir, what's up? The king is sleeping on my bed. His majesty's royal slumber has been disturbed by my neighbors. <laughs> All right, uh, what did we say? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do a little cheat. Nope. Yep, there we go. I want this. Give me this slide. Because I'm just going to draw over it. As one does. Alright. We're just going to change everything. 
on this slide. I don't need this anymore. I know I'm going to do orchid mules eventually. I'm just gonna change these into ROTC Breitholt, which is very good. And football captain, do knock. Which is just going to be erasing all the cloak bits <laughs> and maybe the gauntlets and maybe the big broad belt. I don't think that's going to be in modern ROTC and probably no chainmail, I guess. Um, and then this is just a matter of redrawing some, some lines because he's going to be in a football uniform. So a lot of this stuff is actually going to stay. Er, maybe not this. All right. And not, not the fuzzy hoodie. All right, ROTC, hmm. Uniform? I think I had her in a baseball cap, like a commanding cap. Eh? <laughs> You know, as as folks in the Navy wear? Question mark. The true story is that I actually did do research on this, but it was quite a while ago. So in all honesty, I have forgotten some of my research, but I did do it at some point. Um, let's see. Well, screw it. I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at the picture. ROTC, what do they wear? Oh, okay. It's like camo. <laughs> it's just a dress uniform. Hmm. Whoops. Well, that's a fun, that's a fun thing to do. Just resize my entire window, cool. I absolutely hate it. All right. So she is going to be in a dress uniform. Hmm. Okay, so the nice thing about drawing a dress uniform, or like a military uniform, they're just... It's just a rectangle. They're just meant to be shapeless. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, so she is just gonna be hanging out in her uniform. Do they wear caps like this? They do. Now they do. Boots? No, nope. they're not up high like that. If they're wearing boots, they're tucked under the pants, so. There we go. And, hmm, I guess the tunic, jacket, shirt, I, it's kind of tough to tell what they are in the picture because it's, actually, I think they have a shirt underneath. Also, I refuse to draw camo. I'm not going to do it. There's like spots. I give up. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> she gets a name tag, that's it. You'll have to use your imagination. I might put some in in post, but not right now. There's gotta be an easier way to... No, I'll, I'll do it on a different layer. I absolutely refuse to, to put it in in black ink. Oops. Um, let me see, crank this down to 50% maybe, ah, all right, I have decided that I don't want to draw camo. I was going to take a stab at it and decided no. Delete please. 
So I realized about 15 minutes ago that I never actually switched my computer back from uh, Wi-Fi because we played Uno a couple days ago. <laughs> One of the reasons I usually have a hard line running into my computer is so I can stream without any issues. Uh, thankfully, we haven't had any issues today. Knock on wood. But yeah, I look down at my... I looked down at my little, like, signal indicator and was like, oh, hello, that's not... You aren't what you should be. So, I think, I think I'm safe saying it with half hour to go. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> it's okay. Everything's just fine. Alright, so... The bonus of drawing him in football gear is he gets to be even bigger than he usually is. He's just full. He's just wearing football gear and doubled size. Yes, excellent. I'm so glad we haven't had any issues. I've, I've been watching my, I guess my indicator, the little bitrate thing that shows like, hey, your stream is sputtering. So good. So far. Knock on wood. Uh, I'm gonna draw him with a football in hand. But it's like a human-sized football, so it's like a large lemon to him. It is unclear <laughs> whether they would be playing with a regulation size human size football. I think it would be funny though. Alright. <laughs> yeah, it's basically just take however big he was before and just keep drawing the lines out. His silhouette is just gonna be ginormous. Let's see, and what, is fo what do football pants have? They've got like these guys, I guess. I do own a pair of football pants because I cosplayed as a character from Ice Shield 21, another delightful piece of media that I just really haven't, I haven't, uh, I guess, thought about. The series ended, but yeah, it's football anime. So I should know what football pants look like, because I have a pair. Do I remember what they look like? Hmm, no. Not really. I know they have, there's like pockets for the, the padding to go in. And then there's some like, there's some other madness happening there that I'm just, I'm just not going to bother drawing. Alright, so he's got cleats. Cleats are going to make him even taller. So basically the point of the football uniform is just make him big. Big with a capital B. Just like you said. Um, socks? Did the socks go up here? I do not remember. Now they do. Um, he's going to be number one. And then he's the captain. So he gets a cool C. Boom. I'm not going to draw a helmet on him because I don't want to. In the modern AU, he also has a haircut. Because I think I got tired of drawing his braid. So I was like, I just want to draw him without a braid. So he just has... Just a cool fade. It is otherwise unchanged. <laughs> there we go. Captain. Captain of the football team. And do they have commanders in ROTC? Question mark. I'm sure they do. 
commander of ROTC. Whoop. Boom. I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, all right, great. 20 minutes. I've got this AU down. Whoop. That should go in this layer. I'm just going to get rid of it. If I could just choose the right layer, please. All right. Hmm. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think, well, my, my resident feline makes grumpy noises at me because I'm making too much noise. I'm sorry, buddy. If I didn't talk, I think it'd be a very boring stream. And so I must chat. Um, I know what I'm gonna do. I think, I think I'm gonna do, I'm going to do something soft and fluffy. I think I'm gonna show them being just like, just real sweet to each other. Hmm. Now, I think they're just gonna be chilling. They're just hanging out, watching a movie. So I always have to start by drawing him because he's so big compared to her that he essentially becomes part of the background. He's almost like a prop. I have to design the scene around. So every time I draw, most of the time, it's always like, all right, let's plan the scene around him. How am I going to fit him into whatever, whatever panel, whatever interior shot I have planned? It's the same problem, I'm sure, whatever Avengers movie that had the Hulk in it. It was always like, okay, how do we get him on screen? But also there's other people who have to be on screen. How do we make this work? So yeah, a fun exercise in scene layout. Just make your characters wildly different sizes and let the suffering commence. It's, it's good times. All right. Um, so he's just going to be just doing a flop. And he's probably going to have his arm up. Ah, how do you draw sofas? Gosh, I never know. I love to draw people reclining, but can I draw a sofa to save my life? I can't. Sofa always turns into just like a lump. Just the most overstuffed sofa you can imagine. All right, so she is just gonna be popcorn, popcorn hog. I'm not quite sure. She's probably just going to be just bonelessly draped over the arm of the couch. So he, he tries not to take up so much space and she promptly inserts herself into whatever space is left. Because that's how they roll. Also, he's probably asleep. It's like, are you watching the movie? Yep, yep, definitely. She has immediately cottoned onto it. So yes, this is this is their dynamic. Oh my goodness.
also whenever I have a big buff dude I think my my instinct my default and I don't apologize for it is to just draw them in a skin tight shirt so that I can <laughs> do the base drawing of like oh, okay this is how this is how the body structure is and then draw a couple of sleeves great now I don't have to change anything I don't have to erase anything he's just wearing a shirt that's two sizes too small for him character design all right so he's he's just gonna be wearing whoops whoops my lassoing has gone awry he's just gonna be wearing sweats sweats because I can't be bothered to draw anything else also sweats comfy and they're probably adidas right so they're like those track sweats which I have a couple pairs and they're very comfy whenever I'm trying to draw characters being comfy uh, give sweatpants give baggy shirts unless buff dude in which case give tight shirt and also sweats only in that combination <laughs> yeah sweats sweats extremely comfy if I could just exist in sweats I think my life would be complete and when I was homesick with COVID it was sweats day every day because <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to wear anything else because I just felt like just toasted crap all right so I think yeah she's not quite sure of the physical possibility of this but she's definitely just like man taking up the rest of the couch oh yes absolutely um I am almost positive I have talked about this on stream about the difference in fabric between uh, men's clothes and women's clothes yeah I I think all of my current set of pants are from the men's section because a pockets B more durable um, yeah it's just absolutely it's a tangible difference between both sets oh thank you I'm glad you like <laughs> yeah this is kind of why I'm just so fond of drawing them it's because it's like dang you can get such good and cozy scenes out of these two folks who just like who just dig each other And like one of the things I want to avoid in the story, even though it's, I think, one of the central pillars of the romance genre, um, is the whole like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they said, you know, that or whatever, or I misheard that and now I'm running away. Um, so, I don't know. I just, I really, I have fun drawing these characters. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoy them as well. I did say he was going to be wearing a shirt. I keep hearing stuff and I think it's my neighbor. Either that or someone is in my apartment. <laughs> in which case, <laughs> avenge me, I guess. <laughs> Something happens. Um. Also, I have really thin walls, so I can, like, hear when people are talking. 
so sometimes it sounds like something's in my apartment. It's just the house settling because folks are moving either upstairs or in the house next to me. It makes it no less alarming <laughs> to know that it's happening because of a specific, you know, cause. All right. Time to get some grayscale in here. Grayscale. Eh. Eh. Am I on the right layer? Welcome to my stream. Am I on the right layer? My life story. Uh, so yeah, I have um, lots of notes. I have lots of sketchbooks of stuff that kind of occurred to me and was just like, oh, this would make for a fun story. Oh, this would make for a fun bit to put into, you know, these folks' story. Yeah, well, now comes the not-so-fun part of trying to organize it all. I don't know. I think it's a lot more fun to just kind of throw spaghetti at the wall and see what you come up with rather than like great now I have to make it cohesive excuse me <laughs> what do you mean I have to put it all together and make a narrative I refuse um, but yeah so that's this is it's been percolating it's been floating around uh, a little less than a little less uh, than it had been, I guess, at the beginning of the project. Um, but it is one of those things where it's like, dang, like, I really want to, I really want to finish this. I think it would be fun. You know, I think, I think there might be, you know, a couple of people out there who might be interested in seeing, you know, this story take shape. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, no narrative, only vignettes, only slice of life. <laughs> um, yeah, believe me, I was just like, dang, I want to do, I'll do just slice of life. Slice of life in fantasy fort slash forest. And then it's accompaniment, slice of life in modern AU. Because why not? Yeah, we'll see. Like I said, the shape of the story is kind of dictated by uh, my level of, I guess, attention. <laughs> I'm trying to make it accessible to myself in terms of finishing it. So if, if no narrative only vignette is the way, then, then so be it. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is, this is just the vibe that I want my story to evoke. It's like, yeah, bad stuff might happen in the story, but it's like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, stories fall into genres for a reason. So even though there's like twists and turns, ultimately you know how the story is going to end and that's okay. You know, spoiler alert, they, they get together. It's, it's a romance story. <laughs> There's no big surprise. Yeah, no twists. No twist. Only, only happy ending, I guess. Actually, I'm going to give her a color in her sweatpants. Yeah, I know, I know there are uh, certainly precedent for stories where it's like, oh, there, there is certainly a greater narrative at work, but, you know, you just kind of have to follow along with it. <laughs> it's, it's one step up from no narrative, only vignette. It's like narrative made out of multiple vignettes. <laughs> Gosh, I really didn't number on her eyes. I gotta fix those. I got five minutes. I have plenty of time. Thank you. I 
again, it's... I had really just kind of cranked out a bunch of content for these two when the story idea occurred to me, as tends to be the case with anything that I start. And then, well, I think I moved and it was kind of like, um, they kind of fell out of, I won't say they fell out of my mind. It was just, I had other things going on. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're, they're on my, my creative to-do list, among other things, of just like, you know, just get the story done. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's definitely something, that's the trap I fall into is, but I want to wait until I'm good enough to do this story or whatever. Um, and it's a trap. That's all it is. It's a trap. You're never going to be good enough to, you know, kind of visualize whatever thing is in your mind as perfectly as you have it envisioned. And the best you can do is just get it out of your head using whatever skill you have in the moment. And you're gonna hate it when you're done because that's, I think we're all our worst critics. Um, but that's okay. So that's something I'm kind of trying to come to terms with. I'm, I'm slowly getting there. I'm not succeeding, but again, slowly getting there. Do I want to do shadows? Do I really want to spend the next three minutes doing shadows? Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to throw a couple of cast shadows on here because I want to. <laughs> because my life doesn't feel complete without cast shadows. Also, the lighting here makes no sense. So here's what I'm going to do. I feel like I'm going to regret this. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Heck yeah. I always feel like whenever I'm streaming, I always feel like I hit my stride in like the last half hour. And then it's like, okay, uh, time to end the stream. Just when I feel like I got back in the hang of drawing. Um, it's good times. All right, so I got to redraw. Whoop. I got to redraw the Z's. They're probably watching some, like, wink wink at the audience movie. Like, oh, it's Lord of the Rings, because they came from a, you know, their main story is a fantasy story. All right, we got two minutes left. I'm gonna, I'm going to do the recap. Boy, I sure had a lot of, I feel like I had a lot of pictures that were on multiple layers. My goodness. I'm going to hit save. All right, so obviously the stream was Commander-in-Chief. My two original characters, TM, do not steal. No, it's fine. Steal them all you want. I stole them from WoW. Here they are. They're Dunak and Lynn Breitholt, a.k.a. the Chief and the Commander themselves. The two characters who meet and fall in love because of this scene. <laughs> oh, the Warcraft movie. <laughs> Oh, for all of its faults, uh, again, not playing WoW, um, yeah, the Warcraft movie was, like, the animation on the orcs was, like, top-notch. No kidding. I did watch it as quote-unquote research for the story, because it was like, how do you, how, how do orc faces work? <laughs> um, yeah, gosh. I had, I have no idea of, like, Warcraft lore, and even I was like, oh, this doesn't seem right question mark um but yeah so the story is all about me cramming all of my my favorite tropes into one story how many can we fit in here uh it's where's waldo but with tropes battle couple uh they fight together it's great um they play football together question mark it's also great 
I have an alternate universe of them, <laughs> even though I haven't written the original story. You know how it goes. Um, we got one of those too. And it is essentially this. This energy, but all the time. Uh, which is really the vibe I'm going for with these two. You should feel warm and cozy even when they're fighting demons or whatever. So thank you all so much for joining the stream. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all later. Have a great night. Bye.